Today, inshallah, we are going to continue with our series of uh, this very important presentation where we discuss about the stories of uh, Allah's prophets and messengers, peace and blessings of uh, Allah be upon them. Today is episode 5, inshallah. In episode 1, it was more of a general introduction. Episode 2, story of our father Adam, peace be upon him. Episode 3, story of uh, Idris, Enoch, peace be upon him. 4, story of Nuh, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Then today is episode 5, inshallah. If you follow the series of uh, the prophets and messengers of Allah, mentioned in the Quran and if you follow the history you will discover that uh, prophet Hud is the fourth one in the series number one Adam number two Idris number three Nuh number four is Hud and uh, actually he is Hud Bunu Uz Bunu Aram Bunu Sam Bunu Nuh his lineage is up to Nuh, that is Enoch, uh, that is Nuh, peace be upon him. So his biography doesn't stop at uh, only maybe something close here. It's up to Nuh, peace be upon him. And uh, historically, if you follow through history, you'll discover that the most popular view, Hud was part of Arab, was among the Arabs that was sent. Because many ulama said that uh, the most prominent Arab prophets that were sent before the lineage of Ibrahim through Ismail will say number one is Hud, number two is uh, Shu'aib, number three is Saleh, and number four, if you follow the lineage of uh, Ismail alayhi salam, is our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because uh, the lineage of uh, Ismail is what produced uh, Arab of our modern day uh, that we discuss. So Hud is among the prophets and uh, he was born in a town called Hadramaut, which is within the modern day Yemen. And the people that he was sent to lived between modern day Yemen and Oman. The actual place is around modern day Yemen and uh, Oman. Within that area, uh, Prophet Hud was born and lived, and at the same time, invited people to Allah's religion. And to the extent that they were destroyed. Why? Because they rejected and denied the message he came along with. So it is because of this, they rejected the message he came along with, they were destroyed as the Quran. Uh, enunciates to us clearly in so many places and uh, according to the most popular view Hood, peace be upon him was also a prophet and also a messenger yesterday and day before yesterday we explained extensively the major difference between prophets and messengers prophets are what we call al anbiya while messengers are a rusul or prophets are called al nabiyun al anbiya are called al mursalun or prophets are called uh, al nabiyun and uh, messengers are called uh, al mursalun so the most popular view Hud was a prophet and also a messenger why that he was a messenger because he was also sent to a disbelieving nation to a disbelieving people the people that he was sent to them did not believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that made him to be a, a, a messenger and if you read through the Quran like Surah to Shu'ara also verse 125 up to 126 is a clear justification that he was also a messenger because he said inni rasulun inni lakum rasulun amin so it is a clear indication that he is also a messenger. This is a justification because he said he is Rasulun. He was a messenger, I mean a trustworthy one. Meaning that the message he came along with is a genuine and divine message. He was sent 
to people that are, are called in the Quran as Ad. They are Ad. In some places where they live is called Al Ahaqab, as in Surah Al Ahaqab. Surah Al Ahaqab was named after the place where Prophet uh, Hud and his people lived. So it's called Al Ahaqab. And the people he was sent to, they are called Ad or Qawm Ad, as in the Quran. And uh, historically, and based on what the Quran says in so many places, Ad that uh, Hud was sent to were very rich. They, are, they were wealthy people. And secondly, their physique is not the same with our own. Today, based on our structure and our physique, usually our average height is around 1.6, 1.7. Very few of us are all to 2 meters or 2.1 or 2.2. But their average height then was 30 meters. Meaning that, for example, my height is around 1.9. So if you say 30 meters, and I'm told in real sense, if you say 30 meters, so their average height is up to 15 times my own height. 15 times taller than me. This tells you their physique is not the same with our own. And they excel in craftsmanship. Most importantly, they excel in building construction, architecturing, and quantity surveying. That is why they used to build monumental buildings, towers, and there are so many palaces that are beyond one's imagination. And if you look at their physique, 30 meters, then definitely you will agree with that physique they will be able to build that. Prophet Hood, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. His name, referring to him, was mentioned and repeated seven times in the glorious Quran. While the word Hood, what Hood sometimes refers to guidance, sometimes in the Quran refers to the Jews. So that has been repeated 22 times, including his name. So if you remove his name from the word hood, you will discover that his name has been repeated seven times while the word hood has been repeated 15 times without his name. For example, there are many places where you can see hood, but in real sense, it's not referring to prophet hood, peace be upon him. There are many examples. For example, the Quran says, nasara." They said, you become, you become either the Jews or the Christians. This is in Baqarah verse 135. So this is an indication where Hood has been mentioned, but that is referring to the Jews, not Prophet Hood, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. But referring to him in person, his name has been repeated seven times in the Quran. Five times in Surah Hud, one time in Surah Al Arab, then one time in Surah Al Shu'ara. For example, it is an exa it is an assignment or homework. You may try to go through the Quran and discover where his name has been mentioned, has been repeated five times. Like in Surah Al Hud, this Surah Al Hud has been named and entitled after Prophet Hud peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. It is chapter 11 of the glorious Quran and it has 123 verses. So the entire chapter has been named and entitled after Prophet Hood, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. So if you go through the chapter, you will discover his name has been repeated around five times, like verse 50, his name has been mentioned. Wa ila adin akhahum huda. This is clearly making reference to him. And it has also been repeated in the verse 53. I would mention maybe few of them and you can try to discover the remaining. In verse 53, his name has also been repeated. His name has also been mentioned here. And uh, also in verse 58, his name has also been mentioned at the same time in Surah Tuhudu. So, you can try 58, his name is there. Allah Ta'ala mentions Hudu in verse 58. وَلَمَّا جَاءَ أَمْرُنَا نَجَّيْنَا Huda. 
this is his name Allah said we have rescued Hud this is his name and his name has also been repeated in the verse 60 this is also his name and also in Surah to Hud also verse 89 his name has also been mentioned however the name has been mentioned by Prophet Shu'ai peace be upon him while preaching to his people Ya qawmi la yajri mannakum shiqaqi ay yusibakum mithlu ma asaba qawma nuhin aw qawma hudin aw qawma salih wa ma qawma lutin minkum bibaid so these are the five places where Hud has been mentioned in the Quran. Then number six also is uh, in Surah Al-A'raf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, mentioned his name in Surah Al-A'raf, verse uh, 65 there. Wa ila adin akhahum huda qala ya qawmi ibudullaha malakum min ilahin ghayri ghayru afala taktakuna. Then number seven, the last one, his name has also been mentioned in Surah Al-Shu'ara, verse 124 but starting from verse 123 so if you go through you see kadha bal adun al mursalin if qala lahum akhuhum hudun ala tattaquna verse 124 these are the seven places in the quran where the name of prophet hud has been mentioned peace and blessings of allah be upon him the remaining 15 places in real sense it is the word hood, but it's not making reference to him in person, but rather re expressing the actual name of the Jews on one hand, or sometimes just the word guidance, because the root word is from the word of al hidayah guidance. So because of this, you will discover there are 15 places, but in real sense, not making reference to hood in person. So Prophet Hood came after Prophet Nuh, alayhi salam, as we explained earlier. Prophet Nuh preached to his people. At the end, they denied the message and rejected his uh, prophethood. So Allah Ta'ala intended to destroy him. And he directed Nuh to create, to manufacture his own ark. And that ark was used in rescuing him and his followers. And the remaining people were drawn by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. They were drawn from the water that came from the sky and the one that gushed out from the earth. They were destroyed. Only Nuh and his progeny survived. However, some eight people survived with him in that act, but their progeny did not survive. But only those who survived along with Nuh, peace be upon him, was his progeny and eight people. So from their own progeny, or rather his own progeny, that produced what we witness today. So that is why many ulama argue that our origin is from Adam. While after the destruction and the drowning of uh, the people of Anu, those who survive today are from the progeny of uh, Nuhu, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. So historically, if you follow, you will discover that Prophet Hud, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, is actually from the progeny of Nu, and by implication, we are all from the progeny of a new peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. So, because of this, Prophet Hood preached to his people at that time, they were busy worshipping idols instead of worshipping our Creator Almighty Allah God subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were worshipping idols, they had three idols at that time. One of them is called Sadda. And the second one is called Sumuda, and the third one is called Ira. So they were worshipping idols, and he was preaching to them, admonishing to them, and Allah Ta'ala sent him. And he spent 760 years inviting them to believe in Allah, the Almighty God Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, while they kept rejecting, denying, insisting that they would not accept. Until the end, Allah Ta'ala destroyed them. And they were destroyed by a very strong, a very furious, violent wind. It was just a wind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent and they were destroyed by that wind. That wind is what we call today hurricane or what we call cyclone or storm. Allah ta'ala sent a very violent hurricane, very strong one, and it destroyed them completely. 
but look at even their physique of average height is 30 meters but they were destroyed within eight days and uh, five nights eight day times and uh, sorry seven night times this is within the period that they were destroyed completely and this tells us that when we follow guidance is for our own good when we reject we are doing it to the detriment of our interest so that is why it's very important to always try to see that we follow guidance and it's for our own good Allah Ta'ala has repeated the story of Nuh in so many places in the Quran for example if you look at Surah Hud from verse 50 to 60 is a story of Hud, peace and blessings of Allah and his biography if you come back also to Surah Al-A'raf from verse 65, you will discover that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us about his own biography and story as well. If you go to Surah Al-Shu'ara from verse 123, Allah ta'ala explains to us his own story. And at the same time, if you come to Surah Al-Ahqaf, from verse 21 up to 27, uh, is about his own story and anecdote as well. And if you come to even Surah Al Fajr, verse 6, 7, and 8, is about his own biography and story as well. Alam tara kaifa fa'ala rabbika bi ad ira madati imad alati lam yukhulak mithluha fil bilad. And if you go up again, like in Surah al Haqqa, is his own story, starting from verse 6 up to verse 9. So this is also about the story of a Udu and also the story of his da'wah inviting people to believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can go superficially through the Quran and comment on the story and the anecdote of a uh, hood, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him as in the Quran. The prophets we mentioned earlier, Prophet Adam, Idris, Enoch and Prophet Nuh were mentioned in Genesis. However, hood has also been has only been mentioned in the Quran. His name has not been mentioned in the Old Testament or the New Testament directly. However, before the coming of the Quran, there were many people within that area bearing the name of Hud. The name was very prominent. It was a clear justification that Allah Ta'ala had sent a prophet bearing that name. So when he came to his people, they were worshipping idols. His main mission was to rescue them, to believe in the oneness of Allah and serve him alone so that they can attain salvation in this world and in the hereafter. So if you look the Surah to Hud, Verse 50, Allah Ta'ala draws our attention to that clearly. Wa ila adin akhahum huda. Qala ya qawmin budullaha ma lakum min ilahin ghayru. In antum illa muftarun. Allah says, Wa ila adin akhahum huda. To the ad people, their brother hood. Meaning, we have sent Prophet hood, peace and blessings be upon him. To his brothers meaning art people, the people of art. When he went to them, his mission was one. That mission was very clear. He Allah, O Allah, ma lakum min ilahin ghayru, meaning worship Allah. Believe in la ilaha illallah, wa ana rasulullah. Meaning he was inviting them to believe that there is no deity worthy to be worshipped but Allah, and he was Allah's prophet and messenger. And finally, he said, In Antum illa muftarun, you are nothing but inventors of lies. Why? Because they were busy concocting lies in order to fight him and, uh, or, and, and, and subdue or vanquish or rather ridicule the message he came along with. So he was busy preaching to them. When they discovered that with evidences, with argument, Hood cannot be defeated. He could not be defeated by them. 
they decided to silent him by bribing him. They started meeting, discussing how to bribe good peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. That has been the strategy of evil people and criminals. Whenever they feel you are upright, you cannot be ridiculed, you cannot be defeated with argument, they will start employing some strategies, either to bribe him or rather to assassinate him or to threaten him. This has been the tradition. So their next strategy, since who could not be defeated with argument, was just to bribe him, to compromise him. That is what has been mentioned in Surah Hud, verse 51, where the Quran says, Ya qawmi, sta, ya qawmi la as'alukum alayhi ajra, in ajriya illa alallah. He said, oh my people, look at the way he addressed them. Oh my people, ma as'alukum alayhi min ajr. I don't ask you, I do not ask you any reward. I don't need anything material from you. In ajriya illa alallah. My reward is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From my Lord. My Lord will give me my reward. In uh, in another place is from the one who created me not from you so he replied them by saying I don't need any reward what I need is for you to understand the message and at the same time accept it in verse 52 in the same chapter Quran tells us that as they were planning to ridicule him or to compromise him he was busy inviting them to seek Almighty Allah's forgiveness. Ya qawmi staghfiru rabbakum thumma tubu ilayhi. Yursil sama alaykum min dirara. Wa yazidukum quwwatan ila quwwatikum. Wa la tatawallaw mudhibirin. He said, oh my people. Look at the way he addressed them. Oh my people. Istaghfiru rabbakum. Seek Allah's forgiveness. Seek your Lord's forgiveness. Thumma tubu ilayhi. Then you repent to him. You seek his forgiveness and you repent to him. You'll say alaykum midrara. He will send rain from you from the sky. And he said he will increase you in the strength you have. He will add more strength for you because they were very arrogant. Why? Because of their physique. To the extent that they were challenging Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they were tyrants in the true sense of the word. When they seize people, they seize them as tyrants. They are criminals of the highest order. So that is why they were, they were very proud of their strength and their physique. And that is why he said to them, no. If you believe in Allah, he will add more strength for you. More than what you claim you have today. Instead of them to accept the message, they replied him in Surah Hud, verse 54, by saying, "Kalu ya Hudu ma jita na bi bayinatin, wa ma nahan bi tariki ali hatina angkaulika, wa ma nahan ulaka bi mu'minina." Oh, Hud, listen to us, listen to us carefully. Ma jita na bi bayinatin. As far as we are concerned, you have not given us any proof, any evidence about. Allah, you are creator, and any evidence that you are a prophet or messenger. Look at what they said. This tells you, no matter the strength of your evidence, somebody will disagree with you. That is normal. Why? Because this is a messenger of Allah that was sent to his people. But they were ridiculing the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent somebody along with. And they said, We are not going to abandon our gods. Just because of your uh, uh, imagination. We are not going to believe in your message. So this is what they say to him. They are not going to believe. So he was preaching to them. He spent 760 years. Because usually at that time they used to live for over 1,000 years. Some even approaching 2,000 years. It is only now our lifespan is not that uh, long usually is around 60 to 70 that is according to the sunnah but in their own time they live 1000 years 1500 some 2000 some even more than that so their lifespan is not the same with our own that is why he spent 760 years preaching and admonition to them 
So at that time he was inviting them and they were rejecting, trying to ridicule him, compromise him, threaten him or eliminate him as they planned. So that is why Quran draws our attention to some of his messages while preaching. وَإِلَىٰ آدٍ أَخَاهُمْ هُودًا قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ عَبُدُ اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرٍ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ He said, أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ to them. For example, that is in the Surah Al-A'raf, verse 65. أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ He was inviting them to keep their duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finally, they say, do whatever you wish. We are not going to believe in your message. Your message has been received.